You're listening to the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, welcome back in. 443 from the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios. This is the Zach Gelb Show. A lot of LeBron James conversation today. OJ uh, Simpson as well. We'll get into that a little bit later on in the show. In addition to some Doug Peterson as well. Let's go out to the hotline, though. Uh, We just got off the phone with Jimmy Rivera, who will be fighting UFC uh, on Long Island this upcoming Saturday. Let's change gears a little bit and talk to a sports cartoonist from FanRag Sports. And that's Will O'Toole, who's kind enough to hop on board with us right now. Will, appreciate a few minutes. Thanks for the time. And how are you? Thank you very much, Zach. I appreciate it. And uh, everything's going well. I'm glad that you're doing well, too. Well, thanks so much. And, hey, we appreciate you coming on today. So I was on FanRag this morning, and I saw some of your more recent cartoons. You had one about uh, the Yankees and the Phillies a few days ago, and then also one with CNN that also had to incorporate the Philadelphia Phillies. So tell the listening audience a little bit about those two cartoons. Well, real quick, if they can go to FanRags, um, they've been great enough to give me my own little uh, space on the front page. I do a daily cartoon, which – and. Uh, we tout it, or Fan Rags and I tout it as uh, I'm the only national sports cartoonist doing a daily. Uh, and I usually do uh, cartoons that mix uh, social or current or political issues with sports. And the one that uh, you were talking about with CNN, of course, is that it's been dragged down uh, with all the fake news, quote unquote, that have been reported by the uh, Donald Trump uh, presidency. And uh, they're in last place following or falling behind, let's say, Nickelodeon and uh, Nicktoons, et cetera. So I did a cartoon based on the last place teams as we went into the All-Star break. And basically I said, look, if this was network television and it was all six teams symbolically dressed in their uniforms, Toronto, Philadelphia, unfortunately, the Cincinnati Reds, my favorite team, uh, if this was national TV or network TV, we'd be the CNN of baseball. And uh, I I think that goes to play with how terrible some of these seasons have been for uh, especially teams like Toronto and I think even Philadelphia, which I think was looking for, I I think, a real improvement on their uh, their team success this year. Yeah, no one expected the Phillies to make it to the playoffs this year, but people thought they would be a respectable team. And for that, it'd probably be 75, 76 wins, and they are far from that. Uh, this year is they're going to be on pace to lose well over 100 games. When we talk about cartoons, they're supposed to be fun, and you have a lot of fun with it, but then you have to mix in sometimes political issues, social issues with sports. How do you go about mixing in those issues? Because sometimes it could be a world where the sport fan doesn't want to see that stuff. Exactly, but there are some times where the issues just carry over. You know, people always argue, well, politics should be involved in sports, and I have two words, and I've always used this. If you don't think politics is in sports, then you don't know who Jackie Robinson is or his significance. Uh, By breaking the color line and going from the Negro Leagues into professional baseball, I think that Jackie Robinson has improved a lot of of blacks in this country and also have made the games uh, so much more competitive, more exciting, and naturally just just real uh, Americana. Uh, Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I would, and I think that there are a lot of political issues, and there's also a lot of legal issues in sports as well. So uh, even though the sport fan would like to escape from all that, there are issues that do uh, happen uh, from the outside world, uh, from the sports realm that you sometimes do have to incorporate, and sometimes those things do take a precedent over sports because at the end of the day, even though we take it very seriously, it's just a game as we're talking to Willow Tool. Uh, sports cartoonist from FanRag. So you're the only one doing this on a daily basis in terms of sport. Uh, Take me back to the origins for you. How did you develop the interest, and how did you know that you wanted to become a sports cartoonist? That's great. Thanks, uh, Zach. Uh, Four years old, I was starting. I was already cartooning, doing Batman and Robin cartoons, uh, probably taking my my ideas from the color forms and then drawing those uh, uh, scenes of Batman beating up Joker or Penguin, etc., and I just developed a real love, and I started mixing the sports uh, with the cartoons because I did notice other artists getting into that uh, realm of, of cartooning, and that was sports cartooning, the Willard Mullins, the Bill Gallows, obviously, etc. And I just, just uh, pursued it. Unfortunately, like dinosaurs, I think we're a dying breed, but it's, it's great to be the underdog in a sense and uh, continue a great, uh, American tradition of sports cartooning. So I've been doing it since I was four. 
I hate to tell you how much how old I am now, but I am closer to retirement than I am to being a college junior. Put it that way. Hey, if you're <laughs> so close to retirement, that, that means it's made you a nice little living, no? Uh, put it this way: you've always. It's just like in <laughs> any other kind of thing. If you want to be a writer or an actor, you struggle. You have to do other things, but it's a, a wealth, a worthwhile venture, and it's. Um, it's a hobby turned into a vocation, which is turned into an obsession. So I really enjoy it. How long does it take you to come up with the idea for the cartoon? And then once you have that idea, how long does it take you uh, to execute it and draw it out? Um, realistically, it takes me about 45 minutes from, wow. thumbnail, from thumbnail sketch to, and those are all, my, uh, when you see them on the, uh, the fanregs.com site, those are all watercolor. So it's not using the computer. And uh, so it goes from, uh, it's about 45 minutes. And i got to be honest with you, Zach, many times I get my inspiration from just talking to people. Uh, they, they'll say something, I say, wow, I can make a link to this, to this, to this. And then all of a sudden I have a cartoon. And, uh, you know, or uh, I always have a scrap of paper. And if I'm thinking of something while I'm driving or while I'm doing another thing, I, I just rip out the sheet of paper or whatever is, is available that I can write on scribble some ideas down, put, tuck it away in my wallet, and I go from there. So what do you do with the rest of your day if it only takes 45 minutes to make uh, the cartoon? Oh, <laughs> I'm a teacher. Oh, really? Uh, yes, I'm a teacher. Right now I'm working with autistic kids. Oh, wow. And I uh, love it. It's uh, demanding, but it's uh, fulfilling. And uh, I, I just really, and it's, it's a great way. I tell you, the cartoons are a great way to reach kids, uh, no young and it. old. And I've taught... I've taught many kids how to do cartoons just using things like the letters of the alphabet and numbers and uh, geometric figures, and then they realize, wow, it's not so hard to do. The real trick is, can you do it on a successful basis every day, and do you have the discipline and just the love to continue? Because everyone can do it if they just, uh, you know, just try it. How big of a sports fan are you? I have to imagine you have to be big to do this job, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, and it's a constant thing, you know. Uh, the funny thing is I'm constantly reading, and this is something that people don't realize. I read about four or five hours a night, and it's not just about sports and politics. It's about, um, you know, current events. You know, I did a cartoon earlier in, um, in the summer on fidgets, which I came across only watching kids in classrooms using these things. And I said, how great are these things? And, of course, they're supposed to be releasing stress. I looked into it, did some research on it, and... Hence came up with a cartoon with a uh, football coach going crazy over it with his uh, quarterback and wide receiver. So it, it's, it's one thing leads to another. But I tell you the truth, Zach, it's even in this conversation, I can probably get some sort of inspiration to do a cartoon. Uh, but it's a constant process, and people don't realize it. I'm just, you have to constantly think. You just have to constantly um, really craft your, um, your work, and that's what I do. We're wrapping up with Will O'Toole from uh, a sports cartoonist from FanRag Sports. The big news today, and this is always a big story whenever you mention the name O.J. Simpson, but he's going to get his parole in October and he'll be a free man. So how do you incorporate what happened today with O.J. Simpson uh, into the cartoon? Well, here's a perfect example of sports being um, uh, part of the political and social fabric of our country, but it's also something that has to be delicately delicately approached and this whole OJ thing which has been in our culture for the last 20 25 years well fan regs I'm going to plug the uh, website they had the picture of the fellow who's on the pro board wearing the Kansas City Chief tie that is some giving me some inspiration I'm not going to tell you what it is until I finish it and hopefully have it published within the next couple of days but um, you know the OJ thing has to be done delicately and uh, with a mind for a little bit of humor, but also maybe not so much on the OJ parole, but on the things that surrounded it. Well, you have a lot of stuff to go off there with the uh, Chiefs tie, then also uh, the lady that called him uh, 90 years old. There was it, see, it was a weird atmosphere in there today. There was a lot of joking. Um, it seemed like a very jovial room for something that should be very serious. And then OJ gave you so much because he would never shut up today, Will. I, I, no, and no, no question. And even the fellow who said, hey, listen, he's the one who, who I'm the victim. He's wearing a Heisman Trophy shirt. And, I, I mean, I, to me, the Heisman Trophy should, uh, you know, downtown New York Athletic uh, Club should be kind of upset because I, I think it uh, 
kind of, I, I don't know, took a twist of not, of, uh, not seriousness, but like you said, comical uh, nature to the whole thing. It's really a shame. Well, well, once again, if people want to see these cartoons, how do they do it? They go to fanragsports.com, uh, scroll down the front page, and you'll see my cartoons. It's O'Toole Cartoons. And I, as I say, I do a daily cartoon. Uh, usually they process it about 6, 7 o'clock at night, sometimes early, depending on deadline and also what transpired uh, in the 24 hours before then. Well, well, great stuff. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks very much, Zach.